Picture this, it's the neon-soaked 1980s, and you're sitting in your living room, bathed in the soft glow of your TV screen. The year is 1984, and you've just tuned into what would become a cultural phenomenon, Miami Vice. As the iconic synth beats of Jan Hammer's soundtrack wash over you, you're transported to the sun-drenched streets of Miami, a world where pastel suits, fast cars, and unapologetic style reign supreme. Your first encounter with Miami Vice was like stepping into a vibrant dreamscape of crime and fashion. Don Johnson's James Sonny Crockett and Philip Michael Thomas Ricardo Rico Tubbs were just detectives. They were style icons, epitomizing the 80 seconds coolness that the world couldn't get enough of. The show's distinctive blend of gritty crime drama and high-octane glamour left an indelible mark on television history. Perhaps it was that unforgettable car chase along the picturesque Miami streets, the pulsating nightclub scenes, or the intriguing undercover operations that had you hooked. Memories of Crockett and Tubbs cruising in their sleek white Ferrari Testarossa are etched into your mind, a symbol of their relentless pursuit of justice in a city of excess. But did you know that Miami Vice was more than just fashion and flash? Behind the designer suits and fast-paced action were some fascinating behind-the-scenes stories and random facts that added depth to the show's legacy. So, let's dive into the hidden world of Miami Vice and uncover the secrets that made it an enduring classic. During classic. During classic. In the neon-lit world of the 1984 TV series Miami Vice, it wasn't just the flashy fashion and pulsating soundtrack that left a lasting impression on viewers. One of the show's standout elements was the classic 1964 Cadillac DeVille driven by Ricardo Tubbs, portrayed by actor Philip Michael Thomas. This sleek and stylish convertible, with its vintage charm and timeless appeal, became an iconic symbol of Tubbs' character and the show itself. The choice of a 1964 Cadillac DeVille as Tubbs' vehicle was no accident. It perfectly captured the blend of elegance and extravagance that defined Miami Vice. The car's presence on screen added a touch of retro sophistication to the gritty world of undercover police work in the drug-infested streets of Miami. But it wasn't just the cars that contributed to the authenticity of the characters. Don Johnson, who played the charismatic Sonny Crockett, went to great lengths to maintain his character's signature look. To achieve Crockett's perpetual two-day stubble, Johnson took a unique approach. Rather than using a traditional razor, he shaved with a sideburn trimmer, creating the rugged and effortlessly cool appearance that became synonymous with his character. In addition to its stylish aesthetics and attention to detail, Miami Vice also served as a launching pad for numerous A-list actors who made guest appearances on the show. Jimmy Smits received his first acting credit on Miami Vice, while Benicio Del Toro and Annette Benning earned their second acting credits through their appearances. The list goes on with stars like Chris Rock, Eric Bogosian, John Leguizamo, Vincent D'Onofrio, and Wesley Snipes earning their third acting credits on the show. The trend continued with Chris Cooper, John Turturro, Nathan Lane, Helena Bonham Carter, Kyra Sedgwick, and Bruce Willis, who all secured their fourth acting credits on Miami Vice. Ben Stiller, Julia Roberts, Lou Diamond Phillips, and Viggo Mortensen took their fifth acting credits from their roles as guest stars on the series. Miami Vice not only left an indelible mark on television history, but also played a crucial role in shaping the careers of these talented actors. Its unique blend of crime drama, fashion-forward aesthetics, and iconic characters remains a cultural touchstone to this day. In the world of Miami Vice, the 1964 Cadillac DeVille, Don Johnson's sideburn trimmer, and the array of guest stars were all integral components of the show's enduring appeal. Together, they added layers of authenticity and charisma to a series that continues to be celebrated and remembered for its contributions to the television landscape of the 1980s. So, as we reflect on the cultural impact of Miami Vice, we can appreciate the meticulous details that made the show a classic. From Tubbs' classic ride to Crockett's carefully crafted stubble, and the talented actors who graced its episodes. It's a testament to the enduring allure of a series that captured the spirit of an era like no other, no other, no other. In the neon-drenched world of 1980s television, Miami Vice emerged as a groundbreaking series that forever etched its pastel-hued aesthetic into pop culture history. While the show's sartorial choices and stylish visuals have been iconic, the inspiration behind its trademark pastel color scheme is a story worth revisiting. 
Michael Mann, the creative genius behind Miami Vice, drew inspiration from an unlikely source, a visit to a paint store. According to reputable sources, Mann found himself captivated by the vibrant hues of paint chips while shopping one day. These captivating shades of pastel, reminiscent of the Miami skyline, struck a chord with him. It was this serendipitous encounter in a paint store that led to the show's distinctive visual palette a signature feature that became synonymous with the show's depiction of the sun-soaked, crime-ridden streets of Miami. But the colorful journey of Miami Vice didn't end there. The show's creator, Anthony Yurkovich, played a pivotal role in shaping the series. Yurkovich had previously worked on Hill Street Blues, where he crafted a memorable character, a 300-pound racist biker portrayed by Dennis Berkeley. Remarkably, Yurkovich decided to recycle the character's name, Sonny Crockett for the lead role in Miami Vice. This unexpected twist in character naming was just one of the many intriguing facets of the show's development. Furthermore, the casting of Miami Vice underwent its own set of twists and turns. Notably, actors Gary Cole and Jimmy Smits were originally in the running to play the iconic roles of Crockett and Tubbs, respectively. Interestingly, both actors eventually found their way into the Miami Vice universe in different capacities. Smits made his acting debut in the series with an appearance in the episode titled Brothers Keeper, while Cole also made his mark in the show, featuring in Trust Fun Pirates. Miami Vice continues to be celebrated not only for its influence on television, but also for the many captivating stories and choices that shaped its unique identity. From a chance encounter with paint chips to the unexpected character naming and casting decisions, the show's legacy remains as vibrant as the pastel colors that adorned its iconic scenes. In the world of 1980s television, Miami Vice stands out as a true trailblazer, leaving a lasting mark on the medium and inspiring countless imitators. The show's creation and development, as seen through the lens of pastel paint chips, and character naming quirks remain an intriguing chapter in television history. Television history. Television history. In 1984, the television landscape underwent a dramatic transformation, and at the forefront of this revolution stood Miami Vice. This iconic series, known for its distinctive look and feel, was the brainchild of NBC executive Brandon Tartikoff. Inspired by the burgeoning success of MTV, Tartikoff envisioned a show where cops resembled rock stars fresh from an MTV music video. The result was Miami Vice, a groundbreaking series that redefined television aesthetics. Brandon Tartikoff's vision was nothing short of visionary. He recognized that the music and fashion of the 1980s were intertwined with popular culture, and he aimed to weave these elements into a police procedural drama. The result was a show that not only featured high-stakes crime-solving but also served as a cultural touchstone for an entire generation. One of the most enigmatic characters on the show was Lieutenant Martin Castillo, portrayed by Edward James Almos. While Castillo rarely engaged in the show's numerous shootouts, his weapon of choice was a Colt Trooper MKV-357 Magnum with a six-inch barrel. This choice of firearm was somewhat improbable for a plainclothes officer whose primary duties were administrative. Some speculate that it may have been a subtle attempt to remind Sonny Crockett, played by Don Johnson, that Castillo held the upper hand, or rather, the bigger gun. Beyond the guns and glamour, Miami Vice had its own share of quirky details. One such oddity was Sonny Crockett's alligator companion, affectionately named Elvis. What's intriguing is that Elvis served as the mascot of the Florida college football team that Crockett was supposedly a part of before joining the police force. This whimsical touch added a layer of depth to Crockett's character and showcased the show's knack for blending drama with idiosyncratic charm. Miami Vice not only left an indelible mark on television, but also became a cultural phenomenon of the 1980s. Its fusion of fashion, music, and crime storytelling was ahead of its time, cementing its status as a timeless classic. In summary, Miami Vice emerged from the visionary mind of Brandon Tartikoff, taking inspiration from the MTV era to create a TV series that redefined style and substance. Lieutenant Martin Castillo's choice of a formidable firearm in Sonny Crockett's alligator mascot. Elvis added intriguing dimensions to the show's characters. As we look back, Miami Vice remains a testament to the creativity 
and innovation that can shape television narratives. Miami Vice, a catalyst for Miami's transformation in the mid-1980s, the television landscape was redefined by a show that not only captivated audiences, but also left an indelible mark on the city where it was set. Miami Vice, the iconic crime drama series that aired from 1984 to 1989, not only brought sleek style and thrilling storylines to the small screen, but also played a pivotal role in reshaping the image of Miami itself. Tourism officials in Miami credit the series with a remarkable feat, transforming the city's reputation from a retiree's haven to a vibrant, youthful destination. Prior to Miami Vice, the city was often perceived as a retirement community, primarily attracting older visitors seeking a quiet life in the sun. However, the show's glamorous portrayal of Miami's nightlife, fashion-forward characters, and pulsating soundtrack introduced a new narrative. It depicted the city as a place of excitement, luxury, and hedonism, attracting a younger, more diverse crowd. One of the most remarkable aspects of Miami Vice was its unwavering commitment to visual quality. The series spared no expense in crafting each episode, making it one of the most expensive shows to produce at the time. In a startling comparison, the cost to produce a single episode of Miami Vice exceeded the entire annual budget of the Miami Police Department's Vice Unit. This commitment to visual excellence set a new standard for television production and elevated the show to a league of its own. As fans bid farewell to Miami Vice in its final episode, they were treated to a subtle yet intriguing detail. In the closing scene, Sonny Crockett, portrayed by Don Johnson, is seen wearing a University of Kansas Jayhawk t-shirt. This seemingly minor choice of attire holds an interesting connection to the actor's own life. Don Johnson was, in fact, a student at the University of Kansas before embarking on his acting career. This nod to his alma mater added a personal touch to the series' farewell, and left fans with a final curiosity to ponder. Miami Vice not only left an indelible mark on television history, but also played a pivotal role in reshaping the perception of Miami. Its stylish portrayal of the city and unwavering commitment to visual excellence set it apart, making it a true cultural phenomenon of its era. And of its era. And of its era. As we bid adieu to the neon-soaked streets of 1980s Miami, we invite you to pause for a moment and reflect on your personal connection with the iconic TV series, Miami Vice. In this sun-drenched world of pastel suits, speedboats, and synthesizer music, there's a place where nostalgia meets timeless cool. Perhaps you remember the pulse-pounding action, the charismatic duo of Crockett and Tubbs, or the unforgettable soundtrack that still lingers in your mind. Maybe it's the fashion that left a mark, those linen blazers and Ray-Ban sunglasses that redefined style in the 80 seconds. Or it could be the way the show captured the essence of a city where glamour and grit intertwined. Miami Vice wasn't just a TV series, it was a cultural phenomenon, a window into an era that continues to inspire. So, take a moment to share your favorite memories, your thoughts, or even your own Miami Vice-inspired adventures. What did the show mean to you? How did it shape your perception of Miami and the 80 seconds? Your stories and reflections are the threads that weave the fabric of Miami Vice's enduring legacy. Together, we celebrate the past and keep the spirit of Vice alive. Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane with us. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated.